Hi everyone, I'm Navita and I'm a developer advocate at Reality Labs who works on products and features for our developers who are helping us shape the future of VR. In this series of videos, we'll go over Quest multiplayer features by exploring the shared spaces sample made in Unity. This is the third episode of a four-part video series. In today's video, we'll go over the steps involved in making a simple game on top of the Unity shared spaces sample. For ease of demonstration, we will use the purple room which can be reached from any lobby. But this can be implemented in any room that you prefer and can change based on your game's needs. So without further ado, let's dive in. So since we are starting from the existing project, let's open the project we cloned from GitHub and open the startup scene. For this exercise, we will create an empty folder called Game Assets in our Assets, under which we will create folders for all the assets that we need for this game. All game scripts will live under a folder called Game Scripts under the main Shared Spaces Scripts folder. Let's take a look at all the objects we currently have in the scene. We have the Shared Spaces Application object, which has the Shared Spaces Application script attached. We will be modifying the script as we build this game demo. This script has references to the network layer, the scene loader, the spawner, and the VoIP. This script also consists of various callback methods for when the host or client connections are established, disconnected, or restored. It also consists of methods that allow invitations to be sent by launching the invite panel, logging errors, joining and loading the correct rooms among other functions. And then we have the shared spaces network layer. This game object has references to the network manager, the photon real-time transport script which allows the communication between players that share a space as well as the network layer for shared spaces which uses this transport script. The network manager script is a Unity netcode script that handles all the networking related settings such as allowing you to start or stop the networking, letting you provide the networked prefabs and registered scene names. In our shared spaces sample, we have provided references to our player prefab and the session as shown. Among other objects, we have the scene loader, spawner and other objects for voice, player state and the camera. Since our game will be in the purple room, let's now open the purple room scene. In this scene, we see that it already has some elements set up. We will now start building our world in this room. For this example, we will use Unity's asset store for all our game assets. Here is where you will find all the free assets that we use for this game. Note that the use of these assets should be as per their license terms. Please visit the Unity Asset Store to read the license terms in more detail for each of these assets. We already have them imported in our Game Assets folder. We have assets for chicken, a farmer, sound effects, and our environment. So, let's go over what our game is. In our game, you and your friend, who are farmers, have found chickens that are running around in the forest, and you have to collect them. This will be a two-player game where the first person to catch 30 chickens wins. Through this simple game, we will learn how to use the shared spaces sample to create multiplayer VR games easily. We'll go over netcode basics, inviting a friend to play with you, and other aspects of multiplayer features in Quest. So first, let's add an environment to our game. We have a prefab that we've made from these environment assets that we'll drop into our scene to use as our environment. Next, we want to have the positions where we want our chickens to be spawned and move around randomly in that area. To achieve this, we'll create an empty game object and call it Positions. Under this, we will add positions that we want the chickens to spawn at. To be able to control the spawning and general scorekeeping of the game, let's add a game object called Game Controller with a Game Controller script attached to it. This will be our main controller and will also be where we add all the logic related to the instantiation of the chickens. Let's open the game controller script where we add the logic for setup at start, general scorekeeping and the logic to popular chickens. We create a list of game objects for the positions we just created and a reference to our chicken prefab. We will also add a list of transforms to store the transforms from the positions 
a few booleans for telling us if the player has won and if the chickens have started spawning or not, an audio source which we can play when a chicken is collected, among others. In our start function, we will find the reference to the audio source and assign it to the collect sound object. We will then iterate through our positions and store the transforms in our positions to spawn list. And also disable the renderer for these positions so they are not visible. Next, in our update function, we will check if the chickens have started spawning. If not, we will start our coroutine to popular chickens. Now, we will add a new coroutine and call it popular chickens. We will set the start spawn to true as chickens will start spawning now. And while no player has won the game, keep spawning the chickens randomly within the play area in random orientations and facing in the correct direction. Now, the next thing is to add a tag to our chickens so that we can identify them when they are caught. For this, let's go back to Unity and open our chicken prefab. We'll add a tag called chicken. I've already created one, so I'll go ahead and choose that. We will also add a collider with the trigger enabled on our chickens if it doesn't already have that. We also want our chickens to move randomly once they are instantiated. For this behavior, we will add a script to our chicken prefab and call it random movement. This script makes the chickens move towards random points within your area and controls their animations. In the random movement script, we get a reference to our game controller, the animator, and the methods that control how the chicken moves and turns and how the animations change based on whether it's walking or turning. Adding these just makes the chickens a bit more interactive. Now, let's go back to our scene. Let's make sure that all public references to game controller are set up correctly. Let's add some audio sources in as well. We have some that we imported from the Unity Asset Store. Let's add one on the game controller to have the collect sound when a chicken is caught and another on the ambience for background sound. Make sure that you set the volume above zero and disable play on awake for the collect sound. Now we have our basic scene set up ready for our players. Let's look at setting up our players now. For our player, we want to use the farmer model that we got from the asset store. To do that, we first open the Shared Spaces Player Prefab. We notice some of the components on the Player Prefab. Network Object Since we want our Player Prefab to persist over the network, we need to have the Network Object component attached to it. Shared Spaces Player Color This will be used to update the color of our player over the network. And Shared Spaces Player Name This is added to allow us to show the player's name over the character's mesh. Now, let's set this prefab to use our farmer's model instead. We will first edit the animator avatar to use our farmer's avatar. We'll also open the geometry on the left to update it with our mesh as shown. We also want that our player's mesh is correctly updated when the player attempts to change the color of their clothes. In our case, the farmer's shirt color. We update the mesh reference in the shared spaces player color script to reflect that. Now, our player prefab is ready. When the app now tries to instantiate the player, it will now instantiate our farmer as a player. Similar to the chicken, add a tag to your player and call it player. Next, we need to make sure that all launch triggers in our room check for the chicken tag and don't get triggered if the game object is a chicken. For example, in our shared spaces portal script, under on trigger enter, we add if other dot tag is equal to chicken return. Similarly, we will add this condition on all on trigger enter and on trigger exit methods for the shared spaces invite panel, paint shop, query friends, query me and roster panel scripts. Now let's play the startup scene and see if our player is updated to the farmer. We see that our player has been generated. We can use the WASD keys to move our character around. Let's enter the purple room and we see that our chickens are getting spawned as well and they're moving around. Awesome. We now need to add some logic to actually make this a game. We want that when one of our players collects a chicken, it correctly gets propagated through the network so that the other player sees it and vice versa. To be sure that the score is updated for all the players in the game, we need to make sure that the value is propagated correctly across the network. To do that, 
we will use Unity Netcode's network variables and RPCs. Let's see how we can do that. Let's open the Shared Spaces Player State script. Note that this script is extending from Network Behavior, which is an abstract class that derives from Mono Behavior and is the base class that all your network scripts should derive from. In this, we will add two new network variables, one for our first player score and another for our second player score. The first person to enter the room in our game is player one. We will create a method that will get called each time a chicken is collected. Let's call this method setScore. In this method, based on whether it's a server or a client, we will update the first player score or the second player score accordingly. We'll also add two server RPCs for each player as shown. Next, we want to make sure that we call this function when a chicken is collected by a player. To detect collisions, we will add a new script called detect collision. We will attach this script to our farmer player and it will call our set score method when it collects a chicken. We find the shared spaces player state reference and under the on trigger enter method, if the player detects that it has collided with a chicken, it destroys it and sets the flag to true and then calls set score, which we just created. Now, let's make sure that we attach the script to our player. Now we also need a place to show these scores and who the winner is. We want them to be shared between the players too, so that both players can see what they scored and what the other player scored. To set this up, we'll add two scoreboards, one for player one and another for player two. We created these using paths from our nature environment pack that we previously imported from the asset store. We will also have a third one, which shows the status of who is winning at any given point in time. We'll save these as prefabs. Just like our player, these two scoreboards also need to be updated over the network. For any object that needs to be replicated across the network, it needs to have a network object component. So let's make sure that we have this component attached. Next, let's set up the spawner to spawn these as well when the host connects and turn them off initially and only turn them on when the player enters the purple room to play. To do that, let's go back to our startup scene and open the shared spaces spawner script. We will add references to these new scoreboards and add these new spawn methods in the spawner. We will call these spawner methods from our shared spaces application script. Let's open the shared spaces application script and add our scoreboards as network objects. Then call the spawner methods under on host started and on host restored. Now let's open Unity and make sure that we update the references in the scripts and add these new score prefabs to the network prefabs list in the network manager. Now the only last thing remaining is to set up the scoreboard to make sure that these scoreboards update the score when the chicken is collected. For this, we add two new scripts, one for each scoreboard. We call them score controller first player and score controller second player. Now we attach them to the appropriate scoreboards as shown. Let's open the score controller first player and see how it looks. It has the logic to toggle scoreboard renderers and constantly updates the score text based on the score value that it receives from the first player. We do the same for the second player scoreboard, this time with the score it receives from player 2. Here we will get the updated score from the appropriate callbacks in our shared spaces player state script that notifies when the score updates. We will add these two scripts and call them from our shared spaces player state script. We will add two methods, one for each player, that will call the appropriate update score method. We will also add a subscription for on value changed for these that inform the scoreboard that the score has changed so it can update it. Let's make sure to update the logic in our game controller so that we show who is winning correctly on our newly created scoreboards, disable all the panels when the game starts, and only popular chickens when both players are in the arena. Now, let's go back to Unity and make sure our game controller has all the references. Add the reference to the main board's text, the portal objects, and the triggers. Now we're all set. We have set up our player, 
our chicken collection detection and our scoreboards. Let's build our project and we are all set to enter the play arena. I am in my lobby and I can invite my friends to come play with me. Let me invite Cami to my lobby. Hey Cami, let's go to the purple room and check out the game that I just made. This was so much fun. Let's go back to my lobby. Since I invited Cami to join me in my lobby before we went into the game, she and I returned back to my lobby. Thank you Cami for joining me in this experience. So here we are. We went over a quick walkthrough of how you can use the Unity Share Spaces sample to build a simple game on top of it. We learned how to set up our player, how to make use of network variables and RPCs to ensure that our data is replicated across the network, and how we can build a simple VR multiplayer game on Quest in just a few steps. We hope this video was helpful to show you how you can use Unity Shared Spaces Sample to build a large variety of VR multiplayer games. If you prefer to consume information in a written format, we'll also be publishing a blog that will go over all the things we discussed in this video in more detail. The supporting blog can be found on Meta Open Source as well as on the Oculus Developer Blog channels, both of which are linked in the description box below. If you missed our previous videos, you can find them linked in the description box below as well. To learn more about platform SDK multiplayer features in Quest, check out the documentation about multiplayer features. You will also find the link to the Shared Spaces GitHub repo so that you can download, set up and run your own version of the Shared Spaces app. In our next video, we'll go over some more platform SDK multiplayer features in Quest, learn more about travel reliability, best practices, takeaways and resources available to you so that you can have all the things that you need to make amazing VR multiplayer applications. So stay tuned and see you in the next video. Until next time.